In this video, we will take a look at the linear search algorithm. So what does this algorithm do? It takes in two inputs from the user. It takes in an array and a data element. This algorithm checks whether the data element given to it is present in the array input. So let me repeat that. It takes in two inputs. One is an array and one is an element. What does it do? It checks whether the element given to the function is present as one of the elements in the array given to the function. So let's see how it goes about doing this. Let's first define the function. So I'm going to have a function search. I'm going to input an integer array for an example. I'm going to take x as my element. Now, as for the return type, you can either give the return type as a boolean, saying true when the element has been found and false when the element is not found. Or you can give the uh, return type as integer. What the integer return would be is the index at which the element was found at the array. Let's say element x was found at index number 2. We will return 2 from the uh, function. In case the element is not found in the array, we are going to return minus 1. So what is this function going to do? It is going to traverse the array using a counter variable i and at each element of or at each index of the array it is going to check if the element in the array is equal to the element we are searching for. So let's take an example. I'm writing down the indexes of the array. Let us say we are searching for x equal to 6 and this is the array we have input. We are going to keep a counter variable i. So in the beginning i is equal to 0. We are going to check if array of i is equal to x. At the moment x is equal to 6 and array of i is equal to 8 and so it is not equal. In that case we will go to the next element that is we will increment i to 1. Now again we will check is array of i equal to x. 7 is it equal to 6. This is false so we will go to the next element. We will increment i by 1. Now i is equal to 2, array of i is equal to 6, x is equal to 6. We check whether array of i is equal to x. This is true and so at that point we will return the value of i from the function. So let's write that code. i starts at 0, i goes up till the last element or the last index, so less than arr dot length. Each time it increments by 1. At each value of i, what were we checking? We were checking if arr of i if that is equal to x. If this is true we need to return the value of i. If not we'll want to continue the loop. Now if my flow of control of the function comes outside the loop what does this mean? This means that 
we have checked every element of the array. None of the elements of the array were equal to x. Had any of the elements of the array equal to x, we would have returned from the function and the, uh, the program would not have reached this line. So when we are outside the loop, we know that every element of the array has failed to equal x. At this point, we will say that x is not found. Since x is not found, we are going to return minus 1. With this, we come to the end of our function. So, this is a simple traversal of the array at each time checking whether the element we are searching for is equal to the element in the array. If none of the elements of the array are equal to the element we are searching for, we are going to return minus 1 indicating that that element is not found. Okay, now that we have written the code for the linear search algorithm, let us count the number of primitive operations that this algorithm will perform in its worst case. So, what is the worst case of this algorithm? The worst case arises when the element is not found in the array. So we have already previously discussed how to count the primitive operations. So let's do it for this algorithm. Now let's take the first statement which is the for loop. So let's assume that the length of the array is going to be equal to capital N. Now the initialization of i only happens once and it takes one primitive operation. The loop runs n times from 0 up till n minus 1 and so the number of checks made will be for all the n times the loop is entered and for that one extra time that the check fails. Now we have to calculate the number of increments. We are going from 0 all the way until n. Therefore there are n increments being made. Now we have to check the if statement. The number of times this statement is checked is going to be equal to the number of times the loop runs. This is because the element x is never found in the array and so we never return from the function. This if statement will occur as many times as it can. So the loop runs n times, so the if statement will also happen n times. This statement is never executed in the worst case. This is because we are go never going to return from inside this if statement. This is because x will not be found in the array. So we are no never going to execute this statement. We can leave it. Now let's go to the next statement return minus 1. This will take us one unit of time. So let's see how much the total time taken comes out to be. So it's 1 plus n plus 1 plus n plus n plus 1. So this comes out to be 3n plus 3. When we want to find the big O notation of linear search, we say that linear search is order n. Why? Because we will take the most dominant term in the time in the worst case which affects the growth of the algorithm. We have already discussed how to calculate the primitive operations time and calculate the big O notation in the previous videos. And so applying the same concepts there, we can quickly say that this algorithm takes order n time. This is how the linear search algorithm functions.